Yo, Elliot, this week I noticed that I have a lot of internal rage. Well, for the most part, I'm an upbeat, happy, nice guy. I find if I really get too emotional or worked up or take something too personally from my insecurities and inefficiencies, I turn into a tyrant and I produce a really bad attitude that either scares people or makes some or, or pisses some people off. This rage, I think, comes from years of being a nice guy or from my stepdad or my mom. Uh, as they too would get super pissy, they caused so much unpleasant pain and trouble in my life as a child. How can I end this tyrant and strike some kind of balance between being nice and being mean? I like that you use the word tyrant. <laughs> I like that word because uh, according to Robert Moore, as we described earlier in his concept of the King Warrior Magician Lover, each one of those aspects has a polarity, has a negative and a, a positive moment uh, polarity. Now, you don't want to be the negative or the positive, right? Because those are two extremes. You want to be what he calls uh, balanced, right? I think he uses a different word, but you want to be balanced, right? You want to be perfectly in the middle. And so when it comes to the positive aspect of the king, right? And this is great because we're talking, we're in the king transformation program. Previous question was about being and allowing and, you know, that's all king stuff. On one end of the spectrum, the positive end of the spectrum, too much dominion, right? Needing too much control, right? Is the tyrant, right? On the opposite end of the spectrum, we have the coward, Right. So the tyrant is the guy that will walk in and start bossing people around. Right. He believes he's he's has dominion over others. Right. He's the slave driver. Right. He's the tyrant king. Right. That if anybody makes a joke about him, he strikes him down. Right. This is a tyrant. Right. He's not a nice guy to be around because everybody's fucking walking on eggshells. The, 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 the opposite of that, the negative aspect is the coward, right? And the coward is the person who people walk all over him. He has no sovereignty of his own whatsoever. He lets women walk all over him. He lets his friends walk all over him. He don't speak up when things are are are, are uh, pressing on him or someone or he sees a wrong or injustice. He don't say nothing. He just like like the word describes. He cowers. He cowers. Think about a coward. He's gonna scare now. Robert Moore also says, he's got a beautiful line where he, he goes, if you scratch a coward, right, scratch him, you will find a tyrant underneath. He says that these are flip-flop polarities where someone who manifests as a coward is actually repressing his tyrant. So a lot of these guys who walk around uh, allowing themselves, think about this, just an example, maybe like from movies or pop culture, right? Where the nerd, right? The nerd, had, he was in high school and everybody picked on him. The girls laughed at him. The jocks slapped his books and kicked them, right? He's a coward, right? Because he's not going to talk back. He's not going to do anything about it. He's afraid, right? Maybe justifiably so. He's afraid. But then... He gets into a situation where now he's feeling a little bit better about himself. Maybe he's growing up a little bit and he recognized that he has some value, but he holds a lot of animosity. And so this is the story where the, where the geek, the, the nerd, right, then exacts revenge, right? He wants to exact revenge on everybody. Is there a movie called that? Revenge of the Nerds, right? They're going, I'm going to exact revenge, right? So the coward is right, right at the tipping point of becoming a tyrant. And so you say, how can I end this tyrant, right? This tyrant that you have within yourself. And I say, stop being a coward. Because you're going from one extreme to the other. You say, you know, I'm a nice guy. And we know what nice guy means, right? It means I've walked around allowing myself to be a coward. I've walked around letting myself get pushed over, right? And I've done it long enough I've suffered long enough that, I, that I'm at the point right now where I just flip out and then become a tyrant, right? There's no in-between. There's no in-between with the coward and the tyrant. There's flip-flop, right? It's a switch. Boom, boom, right? And then one funny thing about the, 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 the coward tyrant, right, type is 
after the coward lashes out, right? Because he, like he says, if you scratch him, it's right there. It's right. The reason why he says scratch is because it's right below the surface. It's right below the surface. There's a little scratch. And it's like, oh, there's a tire right there, right? A little scratch. He then feels guilty, right? Like you are right now. He then feels guilty. He's like, man, I'm being a tyrant. I'm sorry I did that. I shouldn't have did that. And it is literally a bipolar adventure for that man's life. <laughs> coward, 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 tyrant. Coward, 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 tyrant, right? You got to stop all that. You got to stop that flip-flop, that bipolar activity by finding what's in the middle, right? And so there are, there are a lot of qualities to the balanced king, uh, but one of which is he's assertive, right? A balanced man, a balanced king, someone who's not a tyrant but not a coward is assertive, not aggressive and not cowardly, right? Not The tyrant is, is over-aggressive. Bro, chill out. Calm down. The coward, he's passive. The the man in the middle, the man that's walking the right path, the righteous path, the king's path is a man that knows how to speak up, but doesn't take it too seriously, doesn't take himself too seriously. Now, there's a key to this. So what does it look like externally versus what does it look like internally? Externally, it looks like someone's done something wrong. They've said something wrong or they crossed your path in a certain way and a an assertive man will, in a very calm way, this is important, a very detached way, a very non-emotional way, this is so key, simply say, hey, stop, let me talk to you for a moment. And this is where, there's something you're going to learn in this program called nonviolent communication, and it's, not, it's no pussy bullshit. Nonviolent communication is legit, logical, powerful, assertive ways of speaking to people. He'll say, stop. Do you have a moment? I'd like to speak to you about something. Yesterday, when you walked in the door and you spilled that soft drink on my lap, I felt, now you use a word that describes a non-victimized a non feeling. I felt confused and embarrassed, right? I don't know if that's the right word, embarrassed. It's kind of like victimized. But you know, you, you can't where I'm going, right? I felt, con I felt confused, right? You can't say I felt violated or I can't say I felt like victimized, but you say I had, a, I had an emotional reaction to it. And then, so what you're doing is you're literally just pointing out the activity. You walked in the door and you spilled this and this is how I felt, how I felt in that moment, right? All you're doing is speaking facts, pure facts. You did this. And then I have to admit, I felt angry, right? That's the best word you could say, right? That's probably it right there. I felt angry. There's no, there's no uh, victimhood with anger. I, I, felt, I felt that. All your emotions are yours. And I think that's really the, the paradigm from which it must come. You own your emotions. He didn't make you angry, right? He did what? He, he didn't go inside your brain or inside your heart and like make anger happen, right? Inside you. You chose anger. Anger happened inside you. It's totally yours. You just speaking facts. You walked in and you poured that on my lap. I felt angry because of my need for respect. You walked in the door, you poured that soda on my lap. I felt angry because of my need for respect. And then you make a request. In the future, when you walk through that door, would you be willing to not pour your soda on my lap? Of course, I'm making up a weird, sad, silly situation. But the whole point here is to communicate non-emotionally using very logical language with people. It freaks them out when you do this because they're not used to people being so logical in their assertion. Most people who are being assertive will mix it with some emotion, either in their attitude, their vernacular, the words they use, right? But you, not being a tyrant, but definitely not a coward, speak up using this form of communication, which I teach you all about in this program, right? It's, it's a technology created by uh, uh, Marshall Rosen, I think his name is, right? Look it up, nonviolent communication. Very powerful uh, 
evolved way of dealing with people in, a, uh, in an assertive, direct, grounded, and compassionate way. This is so key. This is so important. So you, what, you, what we have to do now is to be assertive. That's what it looks like on the outside. So I afford you that technology. You have this in this program. You could buy the freaking book. You could learn about it on YouTube, Nonviolent Communication. That's what it looks like on the outside. I, I, I give that my stamp of approval. It's very good. Learn that technique, right? I use it in the home with my children. Especially when something gets very heated, I often have to stop. And then I'll go to my, I'll go to my list. I have a list. And I give you guys a list of all my feelings, all my needs, right? Because we don't have a feelings vocabulary. We have feelings reactions. You need a feelings vocabulary, you need a needs vocabulary, you, this is all available. So sometimes I'll even stop. I'm like, okay, I saw what happened there. Let me go, okay. And then I formulate what I need to say. I'm being very, again, I'm being very deliberate, being very logical, not lashing out. Then I'll go back and I'll address the issue. Right? That's how it looks like on the outside. On the inside, my man, it all boils down to the essence of kingship, which means being. And what is being? Being is not overthinking it. Being is not overly feeling about it. Being is not anxiously doing anything about it. It's like I said, you being a hollow reed. Be empty. We have to empty ourselves out. Empty yourselves out. Empty yourself of emotion. And it's not easy. That requires practice. It requires throning. It requires self-objectivity, right? And so with that, you no longer have to self-identify as a tyrant. You no longer have to show up as a nice guy slash coward, but could be a man that walks in integrity. And that's what you want, dude. Hope that helps. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students, where among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you wanna join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day, in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word king, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting, done.